Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Okay, today I have my April wrap-up. This is part two. I have an April mid-month wrap-up. I will have linked somewhere. <laughs> I'll have it linked down below if you want to go hear what I thought about the books that I read in the first half of the month. So I read 11 books total in April. Uh, four of them were ARCs, nine were romance, two were YA, and I only had one six-star read. And let's go ahead and get into one, two, three, four, five, the six books that I read. So the first book, the first two, I'm only going to briefly talk about because I actually did a full reading vlog for these, where if you want my in-depth thoughts and, you know, opinions on these books, they're spoiler-free. You can check out that vlog. I'll also have that link down below. Pardon me with the hair on my face and the sticky lip gloss. Anyway, so the first book I read was Credence by Penelope Douglas. I did not end up giving this book a rating because I, well, I did read it all, I skipped pretty much every single sex scene except for parts of the first one, which I wish I had skipped. But because I skipped like 90% of this book, because it's, this is overwhelmingly a smutty book, I didn't feel good about rating this. So I, uh, yeah, I, I, I run this out of curiosity. This was part of my collaboration with Jess. And I, I did go into this with an open mind, and I, I feel like I did a pretty good job of giving an objective review in that vlog. I, I see the good points in this, but it was not without its flaws for sure. And they were, I'm not just talking about that, you know, she's sleeping with her uncle. I mean, like, technically there were some flaws about this book and the storytelling element that I did not like. But yeah, this is not a book for me, but I am glad that I read it, that I had that experience, and my curiosity has been sated. So... Okay, the next book that I read is To Bleed a Crystal Bloom. This was also part of my um, collaboration with Jess from Honest Fiction, and I gave this book three stars. This is a fantasy romance. This is a dark Rapunzel retelling, and I really, really liked a lot about this book. I am excited to continue on in the series because I feel like this author has a lot of potential, and there was a lot of setup in here that could be done really well, so I liked this. I gave it three stars, a lot of potential, very excited to continue on in the series. Okay, and then I read Slaying the Vampire Conqueror by Carissa Broadbent. This was my favorite read of the month. I loved this book so much. I loved this book more than I liked both of the previous books in this uh, Nyaxia series. So The Serpent in the Wings of Night and The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, I both really, I enjoyed both of those. But I, I feel like Carissa Broadbent is such a talented author. And I personally really enjoy her Daughter of No World series better. I think that has better character work and better themes. And overall, I feel like it's just, as a whole, I feel like that's a better piece of fiction. But also, personally, my preference is for that. Because I think there are some really great character dynamics and relationships in there that are explored very interestingly. Um, I have a few issues with The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I talked about that in another reading vlog where you can go and if you want to hear my reaction about that in there. But my point is, Slaying the Vampire... I, I have really... Okay, my point is, I've really enjoyed The Serpent and the Wings of Night, the Nyaxia series. I've enjoyed it a lot. It hasn't been a complete home run for me, but I've still really enjoyed it. So all of that being said, I have now found a new favorite book in this world. This could be read as a standalone, however, and it is Slaying the Vampire Conqueror. I freaking adored this book. This had the things that I was missing from the first two books in this series, where we have a very stoic hero. I don't even know if I would call him stoic. We have a, a we, So we have a hero who is a vampire conqueror. He seems merciless. He is destroying these, you know, towns, trying to conquer them to overtake this kingdom and, you know, fight for his people. And, but on the inside, he is a very honorable man, like deeply honorable, and wants to do what's right for his people and take care of them. So our heroine is actually an acolyte of the priestess, is it Akeha? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And, not the priestess, goddess Akeha. And so she is bound by like these rules and obligations as an acolyte of that goddess. And she's sent on a mission to assassinate the vampire conqueror. 
And of course, that setup is just rife with possibilities, right? So of course, she goes to kill him, but oops, she ends up falling in love with him instead, which is one of my favorite tropes. I just think that is so good when it's done well, and I felt like it was done so well here. I just really loved their dynamic. I felt like there was the tension in this romance was built up so beautifully, and I just loved, deeply loved, watching these two fall in love. I felt like it was a very slow developing re relationship. I mean, it had to be because they came from being enemies you know, she's posing as a seer, and he is very reluctant to take her in. But as they're in these battles together, as they're thrown into these scenarios, he starts to see and admire uh, certain aspects of her capabilities in, like, battling, but also her heart and how she will sacrifice herself for his people. And it just, like, this book was just so well layered with all the moral complexities that I really love Carissa Broadbent to do. And I just felt like this was fantastically done. It was beautifully romantic. It was just, it was, it was fantastic. And I, I do believe there was a scene in here where they brushed hands and then he like flexed his hand. And as soon as I read that, I was like, she's, she's a pride and prejudice girly. I mean, we all are right, but I love a good, uh, fan hand flex moment thrown in there. I thought that was great. So I loved that one. I thought it was fantastic. I just, I loved it so much. It was just, it was just great. And so then I read King of Pride by Anna Huang. So I, but both of these two books were arcs. I got Slaying the Vampire Conqueror as an arc and King of Pride was also an arc. King of Pride, I wasn't sure what I was going to think about this because this hero I think is quite a bit different than Anna's typical hero. He's, he's very dominant, but not in her typical dominant hero type of way. Like, he's a very, this is a stoic hero where he is very buttoned up, very proper. You know, he's a British Asian man too, and he is just, just, just so wonderful. But he has all these preconceived notions of what is proper and what he should do and what he shouldn't do. And he's this fantastically uh, successful businessman of his family's company in the running for CEO. So he's trying to do everything right to secure that position. But of course, this club, this very elite club that he goes to often, bar, the heroine is the waitress there, Isabella. And he is just continuously drawn to her, sees sparks, you know, whenever he sees her, just can't stop thinking about her type of thing. And she's feeling the same way. And I just loved, loved, loved this romance. I loved the buildup. I thought that, you know, Anna Huang does tension so well. She really did that excellently here. But the thing I loved the most about this is that this is a stoic hero who absolutely comes undone for his woman. Like, one of my favorite things in the whole entire world. I just love watching that. I think that was just so fun and just delicious in here. And yeah, it was opposites attract. It was a stoic hero who loses it for his lady. It just was a really good time and I loved it and gave it five stars. And I think this is probably my favorite in this series. This may be my new favorite Anna Huang. There was just something about this relationship that just really did it for me and I loved it. Okay, the next book that I read is A Rogue's Rules for Seduction by Ava Lay. This is her newest historical romance release and the third book in the series. I'm sorry, I have to turn my air conditioner on. It is getting too hot to film in my car anymore. These car videos are probably going to come to an end until um, fall because I can't sit in my truck <laughs> in 80 degree weather. But, so I was very, very excited about this book and I've kind of been really hesitant to start it. I've been putting it off a little bit because I loved the second book in the series, which does something really, really well with little pockets of intimacy with the characters and vulnerabilities shared. Like, I've talked about that a lot. That was something that was so evident in book two, and I love those things, and they hold a lot of weight with me. I love when our characters are vulnerable and intimate with each other in very quiet you know, this sort of trying to share and get to know one another and testing the waters. Is it safe to tell them this? Are they going to, how are they going to feel about me? Like, it just, I love that so much. That very tentative, but earnest form of communication. I love it. I love it so much. So I loved that book so much that I was, I was really nervous about this one. And that nervousness was compounded by the fact that everything that I saw being like hyped about this book was some specific steamy scenes or whatever. And that really puts me off because if that's your selling point in the book, that's not a book for me. That doesn't mean it's a bad book. That means it's not a crystal book because that's not the thing that is going to, you know, I prefer the little tiny, quiet, intimate moments rather than some 
really unique or off the wall steamy moment, like by far, by far. The, the tiny quiet intimacies carry much more weight for me than whatever outlandish bonkers thing is happening in the bedroom. Anyway, so I was nervous about that, about that. But I did end up really enjoying this book. I gave it four out of five stars. Initially, I gave it five stars. And then the more that I thought about it, I gave it four stars. The basic premise of this is our couple. They This is a second chance romance. They were deeply in love. They were ready to be married. He is this like very self-deprecating, self-loathing hero. Doesn't believe he's good enough for her. And, you know, her brothers sort of convince him to leave her at the altar because they think that she'll be better off without him too, not knowing or realizing or understanding that she loved this guy and wanted to marry him. So it's complicated. Now the brothers realize they made a mistake in trying to separate them. So they're trying to make it right. And they go to this island and try to throw them together. So they're sort of forced to talk and hopefully get back together. And they do eventually. And there was a lot about this book to really love. It was very fun. It was very fast paced. Well, it was fast paced as far as like the story moving forward. And I also think that she did tension in this book really, really well. She really built it up great. But then once that 70% mark happened and they finally like consummated everything, it just really dissolved for me. And there wasn't enough emotional weight to carry an, all of the steam that was happening for me. So I liked this book. I didn't love it. Um, but I still really did like it, so four stars for that one. Okay, now the next book, the last book I read in April, was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is a YA mystery. I had been hearing a lot of really great things about this book. You know, even people who don't read YA were saying this is just a fantastic mystery. And I love a mystery. I really love, like, a murder mystery. I just, I think if it's clever, and most of them are because that's, like, the whole point, you know. But if it's a really clever murder mystery, like, I freaking love that so much. So I was hyped about this. I was hyped. I finally got the audio. The wait at my library was forever. I finally got it, and I listened to it. I think the audio performance is really well done. It's uh, got a full cast, and it has, like, audio effects because she's interviewing people and things like that. The audio was really great. I did end up giving this book three stars. I felt like it was just a little too predictable. And honestly, like, I struggle with rating this because I think this is a good YA mystery. I think it's a good mystery, but it's not, like, a great mystery. You know, I, I felt like there were parts of this story that also, like, lagged, and I was having a hard time feeling interested because of this. This is something that kind of bothers me. Like, they would come to, like, a dead end in the mystery that they were, like, starting to get clues, and then they were like, oh, well, I guess that wasn't it. And when that happens, I think that's a really hard balancing act to keep your reader engaged in a mystery because the all of the the wonder, the curiosity of, is this actually the thing, is sort of just like dropped off a cliff because they've realized that's a dead end. So you have to sort of immediately have another thread for them to figure out. And I felt like sometimes that took, there was too much of a gap of time right there that was filled in with things like with her personal life, with this boy, you know, things like that. But the pacing in that way didn't feel quite as smooth, and then I found myself losing interest, and the, that combined with the way that it felt just all too predictable for me made this a fun read, a fun time. If you want just some, a really good audio with a good mystery, you know, it was good, but it wasn't great for me. So three stars for that one. All right, my friends, that is it for my April wrap up, you know. <laughs> One good thing about reading slower and taking my time with these books and sort of not making myself feel pressured to read to make content is that my wrap-ups are no longer an hour long. <laughs> so um, I'm happy about that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you have made it this far, please feel free to leave me an orange heart because my current favorite drink is like a peach juicy soda. I don't know. That was weird. Like a peach flavored soda. It's my favorite thing right now. So leave me an orange heart um, for that. And I'll see you all in my next video.